Welcome to more World of Warplanes content from the Noble Q, and in this video we're going to discuss the rare achievement, the Gabraski Medal, and why trying to get one may cause you to play badly. So, I had better start this video by explaining what a Gabraski Medal is. Probably you're aware that the game has a number of epic achievements, and one of these is the Gabraski Medal. And for my money, it's the hardest epic achievement in the game. Others argue that the Quasha Dub is har harder, and it may be for them. But in my case, I can tell you that I have over 22,000 battles in World of Warplanes, and including the video you're about to see, I have exactly three of these medals. My playing style does not suit obtaining Gabraski medals, and I'll explain that as we go through the video. How do you get one of these rare epic achievements? You have to destroy at least 10 aerial targets, seven enemy ground targets. That includes in neutral sectors. This is slightly misleading. Enemy tends to imply a, a zone owned by the enemy. That's not true. But it does have to be done in a single sortie, so you mustn't be sh shot down whilst you're progressing towards these two targets. And you also have to win the battle. That's a stiff set of conditions. The final thing to notice is that you can't earn epic achievements of any kind, including the Gabraski Medal, with aircraft that are lower than Tier 4. Let's talk about how you capture sectors. And here, on this resource, you can see that you need to earn 140 capture points faster than the enemy team for what's termed a neutral territory. That's a white sector to you and I and 160 to capture the territory from your enemies, which is a red sector. Here we see an explanation of the points per target within a sector, but I prefer to use this resource. I'm going to concentrate on just two of these. The small armoured ground target is worth 20 capture points, and the plant special ground target is worth 80 capture points, and I'll be attacking mining plants in the replay that's coming up. So try to remember those figures, please. Incidentally, for your convenience, all the resources I've just shown you are, have links below the video. Here we are on the peripheral mission map. It's the Silence of Ice variant, and that happens to be a variant which is favourable for trying to obtain a Gabreski medal. Not all maps are as favourable. In this particular case, because I'm flying a Blenheim F, I get a head start because I can go to the mining plant and attack it without fear of being shot down by enemy defence fighters, because there aren't any at a mining plant. It gets harder after that. I would have to fly through the forward airstrip uh, and take my chances on avoiding being shot down there and hope to be able to get to the enemy mining plant in a condition where I can do further ground attacking and possibly also shoot down aircraft then. Not all things will align in all battles. This is why the Gabreski medal is hard to achieve. Now I'm going to skip the strategy and tactics analysis that I normally do because the point of this video is to talk about the epic achievement, but clearly enough you need to concentrate on that, possessing the mining plants if you possibly can here. So, as mentioned uh, a moment ago, my first order of business is to go to the mining plant and attack it. Now the Blenheim has four bombs, they're good bombs, and normally what I would do here is attack the power plant in the middle, which, if you remember from the section uh, earlier in the video, is worth 80 capture points towards the 140 you need to capture a neutral sector. However, and I'm just going to pause here, in order to get, to get a Gabreski medal, you need seven ground targets. And clearly enough, if I use my bombs on the power plant in the middle of this object, I will destroy it but then I will have no bombs and I will have destroyed just one ground target. In order to uh, maximize my chances of getting a Gabraski medal, I have to destroy other targets. And here's where the inefficiency comes in. I could consider destroying some of the secondary targets, but they're not going to give me enough ground targets for the Gabraski medal. So I have to go for the lowest value targets, which are the gun emplacements. Now, all of the gun emplacements at a, a mining plant, I believe, are armoured. And if you recall again from the earlier part of the video, those are worth 20 capture points. 
I've got four bombs. I could potentially destroy four gun emplacements. That will give me 80 points. That's the same as the power plant. And at this point, you may be thinking, well, it's equal. Why not do it? The thing is, it will take me longer to take out four gun emplacements than it would the power plant. I can do the power plant in one pass and be on my way. You'll see here that I have to uh, change uh, my attack angle uh, on a number of occasions whilst I'm trying to get my gun emplacements, partly because I can't bomb four targets as quickly as I can bomb one, and also because my team is interfering with what I want to do by inconveniently bombing some of the targets that I was lining up. So let's see how this works out. Coming up on the first gun emplacement. Carefully getting the aiming circle in place. It turns orange and I drop my bomb. Looking for the second gun emplacement. And as you can see, I managed to successfully destroy the first one. Nothing worse than not destroying your target. I can't get to on this one um, without missing. So I opt not to drop a bomb and that was the right decision. Turn towards another target. And here you can see the time that I'm taking. I would have destroyed the central object by now. And there I've lost more time because the ground attacker destroyed the target that I wanted to destroy. So now I've got to search for another one. So it's all the way around to a ground target that I tried to bomb a few moments ago and decided not to because I had the wrong angle. And now I get my bomb in. And that's my third ground target. And here, again, the target disappears before I could bomb it. I look for another target and decide I will actually take a larger target out because there's only one building left. And success. That was my fourth ground target with my fourth bomb. So we've achieved my first goal, but I would reckon it probably took me about twice as long to capture that plant as it would have normally if I'd taken out the special object in the middle. And time can be extremely precious in World of Warplanes. That could be the difference between you winning a battle in a tight game or losing it. Now bear in mind I also need aerial targets. So I'm beginning a slowish climb, which is all you can really do in a plenum to see if I can get the uh, enemy heavy. He begins to come into range. I begin to shoot at him and damage him. Disturbingly, he's going low into the airfield. And this is worrying because I'm exposed if I'm at low altitude. Nonetheless, that allows me to get my second aerial target. And fortunately for me, a third one appears in front of my guns. And again, that was a, a good piece of fortune because it allowed me to take the airfield. And the stars have aligned because we need to win this battle as part of the conditions for getting the Gabraski medal. And even better, the enemy has not yet taken its mining plant. So I can do work here whilst I'm waiting for my bombs to uh, come back on the attackers. So we pick out a, a heavy to kill first. I can leave the bombers for afterwards because they're not going to attack me unless they manage to get into a ramming posture, of course. I still haven't got bombs. So I hunt down the bomber. Now, aircraft that are suitable for trying to get a Gabreski medal in, well, clearly you need ground attacking potential and clearly you need to be able to shoot aircraft down. Some of the British heavies are good candidates, the Blenheim, the Bowfighter, Mosquito and the Hornet perhaps, and the Japanese multi-rolls are also excellent choices. Of course they're high tier where it gets harder. Potentially the German ground attackers, which have the altitude performance to get up to bomber flights, could be used for Gabreski's medals as well. In fact I've also had a Gabreski medal in my RB-17 bomber, and strangely, one in the tier four lag three four. As I continue to wait for bombs, I continue to take out uh, enemy uh, aircraft. Unfortunately, the heavies fly straight past me because they're intent on getting the bomber. 
I check on the fighter to make sure he's not going to shoot me down. It would be a disaster. I've got the Blenheim. Unfortunately, the fighter and the heavy decided not to chase me down. There was a moment there where I thought I was going to be attacked by the fighter. He chose to flow away. Again, the stars are lining. So I come back and this time I decide I must get rid of the fighter. And there he goes. That's my seventh uh, aircraft. And at this point I had my bombs, I decide not to waste any more time, even though I hadn't cleared out the enemy aircraft. And again, that's something I wouldn't normally do, as you're well aware. I place a bomb on the special object, the remainder of it. A bomb on the gun emplacement. I now have five targets on the ground destroyed. I put some shots into the enemy Wirraway, because I still need aircraft as well as ground targets. That's my eighth. I still have two bombs. I'm very lucky to find a, a target I can destroy with my guns. And that made my sixth. And I used one bomb here on the gun emplacement to get my seventh. And now I can concentrate on aircraft. Inconveniently, I'm severely damaged by the ground attacker. So I break off and try to get some distance so I can deliver a more potent attack. And in doing the groundwork, uh, I managed to take the plant as well. Which is good news, because that puts us in a good position to win the game. And the Grand Attacker hasn't given up yet. Injures a crew member, who I heal. I put some distance between myself and the Grand Attacker and come back for what I hope will be the final pass to kill it. And that's my ninth target. And at this point I've got a, dis a decision to make. Do I fly off to another sector to try and find a, an aircraft to shoot? Or do I stay here, climb slowly, and try and get a bomber or a heavy? I did head towards the airfield. I couldn't see uh, much there that I wanted to go for. Felt I was nearer to the bomber, so I decided to opt for the slow climb. And now things are getting tight. As the plants tick over, we will get closer and closer to winning. One is ticking over now. Have I got time to get this bomber, my tenth target that I need? Or will I miss out on the Gabraski because the game ends before I can shoot down another aircraft? I use my engine cooling to get to the bomber as fast as I possibly can. A tight turn from the bomber very nearly evades me. It's very, very tight. I ignore the heavy, which again I wouldn't normally do. I shoot the bomber down, and almost instantly the game wins. And as you can see, by the skin of my teeth, I've achieved the Gabraski Medal and a couple of other epic achievements, and got 13,480 personal points. And I was sweating, I can tell you. Taking a look at the battle results, we can see it is a 4 chakram battle, or a grade 2 heavy fighter, 87,442 credits all silver if you prefer, of which about 29,000 were due to the premium camp bonus. We look in the message box, which is set up correctly, no expenses, the aircraft wasn't shot down, and I used prepaid consumables, 4,071 experience with bonuses, 203 free experience with bonuses, and three tokens, first medals of the day being the Maguire, the McCampbell, and that all-important Gabreski. Looking at the personal score tab, well, two of the class-specific missions aren't complete, and that's no surprise. When you're chasing a Gabreski, you can probably kiss goodbye to doing your class-specific missions, and therefore also a grade one fighter. And if we look at the personal points, again, that's been affected by the fact I was chasing the Gabreski, as opposed to doing uh, work such as shooting down bombers, and being more aggressive in flying to other sectors, 13,480, three sectors captured, 10 aerial targets destroyed, exactly the number I needed, 2,642 damage to aerial targets, on the low side for a game in the Blenheim for me, 
uh, again because I was concentrating more on grand targets than I do usually. 20 critical hits. 560 capture points, which was divided unsurprisingly only 80 for defending and 480 for attacking. That all important 7 ground targets destroyed with 7518 damage to ground targets, much higher than I would normally do. Now we go into the team score tab, uh, we can see that uh, that was enough for first place on my team. Of course, it was a team full of bots. On the enemy team, unlucky Bristol. Raid 1 fighter, 15,000, 15,500 personal points. And I can tell you without dropping in to look at his statistics, he actually captured five sectors. The big problem was he was unable to capture the key ones, which were the mining plants, which of course I did capture. So a little bit unlucky for him. That was my demonstration of how you might go about getting a Gabreski medal, that rare epic achievement. And in order to get one, you need a favourable map. You need teammates who don't stop you from doing what you need to do too much. You need an enemy that doesn't attack you too much, but is there to be shot down. And you have to take some risks, for instance, ignoring aircraft that could shoot you down in order to do ground attacking. And here's the rub of it for me. You also have to fly inefficiently, at least in my book, because you will spend more time than usual capturing sectors because you are trying to destroy more ground targets, ground targets that may be destroyed by your uh, teammates before you can destroy them, and you aren't attacking enemy aircraft that are also trying to capture the sector. All that makes the Gabreski medal difficult to get, and if you set out to get it, it's something that tends to work against you winning a battle in the most effective manner. I hope you found this video interesting, and if you did, you'll come back and see more of my future content. But until then, this is The Noble Q, signing out.